think in the end, uh, there's, there's three sort of main things that should influence your choice of, of position, of theoretic, meta-theoretical position. First of all, is the understanding of them. So you have to have a, you know, there's a one way to do it is just having a, a menu of all the positions and choosing one. Um, it's one way to do it. I wouldn't say it's the best way to do it. Um, the second one is, is to address essentially the theory or the, um, the research that has been done in the area you're looking at. So looking at the area, looking at the problem you're trying to solve, um, how has it been researched before? Um, what could another position actually contribute? And in what way could it contribute? And um, you know, how, how could it be useful uh, in solving a problem that might have not been solved so far? And the third is is really your own sort of uh, personal position. I mean, what do you believe in? Uh, what do you think? Uh, and then see see how it how the position fits to your to your views. And I think well, I I did a bit of of all the three. So I mean, this comes back to the idea that the choice of ontology, epistemology, and even theoretical grounding is an almost a political process, heavily influenced by your supervisors, um, others in the field. Um, critical realism, I would say, is, is not used much. Um, and I know not used so much in your area that you're particularly interested, you know, researching uh, innovation, new business startups. Um, just briefly to close, why, why is that? And why did you choose to go this, this way? Well, there's there's two the two sort of main areas that are or main theoretical perspectives that are used in entrepreneurship although the one is the very dominant positivist position um, and the second the other one is obviously the sort of interpretivist aspect or side um, and my specific question was looking at how small businesses grow uh, and how they can be supported in that growth and reading through all the research that's been done in that area, uh, that's heavily dominant on positivism. Uh, I couldn't find uh, something that actually was satisfactory. Uh, the, there was no, well, there's a view of firm growth that looks at the stages of growth and um, it's very deterministic and linear. Um, but the reality of it is, is, is something very different. Um, so this positivistic view didn't actually help in answering the question of essentially how do firms grow. Um, so I decided to choose um, critical realism in that sense because it, it addresses or it helps to understand the fact that um, there is, again, looking back at the main con construct of this um, position, the fact that we have uh, representations of things. Um, it's the same with a business. Essentially a business is, a, is, is in everybody's mind is represented in very different ways, be it by the product it sells or by how much it generates uh, taxes for, for a country uh, or for you know, how much investment it returns. Um, and uh, these perceptions actually create sort of forces that that push or pull the, the, the business in different direction. Um, well, at least that's, that's how I've started to understand it. Um, I think the reason why critical realism is not uh, adopted that much is, first of all, it's much more recent than um, the other positions. Um, and I would say it's complex. I mean, that's, that's one of the things, but the, uh, the main, I think the important thing, and it's mentioned in Min Minger's uh, 2014 is the, the fact that it doesn't really create any certainty and it's not made to, to do that because it understands that every situation that we face is unique. Uh, and therefore, 
we have, there are structural forces that affect all events, all situations. And those forces may or may not be manifested in certain situations. And therefore, every position is unique and you cannot predict things. And that, that I think is a, is a strong obstacle to its adoption because people want to know what's going to happen in the future. The desire for certainty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, what's one of the main barriers to more people adopting critical realism? Uh, the way I see it uh, is that we are taught in a sort of dichotomic way. So it's either one side or the other. Um, it's either a realist ontology or relativist ontology. It's either subjective or objective epistemology. Uh, and it's easy to understand uh, in this way. <clears throat> and it's, it's essentially based on, the, on how it's been done in the past. But um, perhaps what we should look into is where, where are the gray areas? Because nothing is just one extreme or the other. Um, and I think it's perhaps the problem of, of teaching philosophy of science is, is, is actually conveying this complexity and, and providing the options to, to those who actually will use them. Because one one of the things I find is is a lot of students back away from this area anyway because you know the words are unpleasant ontology epistemology these aren't naturally engaging words but they do you know they explain succinctly what we're trying to do which is how do you see the world how do you understand the world and therefore what can you know about the world um, yes it's it's difficult to understand and i'm not uh i i, I think it took me a, a few few months as well to just read into it and and every time i discuss it with any you know any professor any expert in in these areas it's it's always um shaking my own foundations and understandings um but that's i think that's part of it as well is is going through these um the the, the issue probably is that we're asked to be exp experts in our areas, which in my case is entrepreneurship innovation. Um, but at the same time, we're asked to be as, as knowledgeable about philosophy of science, research methods and methodologies. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's just so much you can read um, within the, the time of a PhD. Uh, and, and perhaps that's that's one of the issues. At some point, we have to be experts in, in too many too many different things. It's very true. And actually, I think even as a, as you get more senior in your career, uh, these areas still haunt us. Okay, well, that's not reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of learning. It's why we do it. <laughs>